an island that doesn't have power there. Then, of course, Maria continued to work its way on off towards the north and the west, approaching uh, the island of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands as well, as we worked our way through our Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Category 5 hurricane, those winds were in that 160 mile per hour range, starting to come down just a bit. That, of course, was as it was moving over the landmass of uh, Puerto Rico, disrupting it just a bit. But uh, you can see that landfall taking place early in the morning of September uh, 20th. Category 4 hurricane there with 155 mile per hour winds moving and scraping across the island. Of course, we've seen the pictures, we've seen the damage. We know that uh, basically the entire island was out without, without power, and it could last for four, maybe even up to six months. The recovery is going to be great. Looking at this picture here, this is again before Maria uh, worked its way on through. Look at this lush landscape, all of the green, all of the trees. Well, things change uh, pretty uh, dramatically here once uh, Maria moved on through. Now, look at that. Just incredible trees stripped and bare at this point and a lot of damage here. And these are scenes all across the island. Are pretty incredible that what Maria has done uh, to the island there. Recovery is going to take quite some time. Of course, we're not done with Maria just yet. Working its way down northward, potential impacts for the U.S. East Coast. We're going to keep a very, very close eye on that, how that all plays out here over the next couple of days. All right, we want to take you to Massachusetts, where the shoreline is still seeing some action. The big waves are kicking up with the help of Jose. Here in the town of Hull, winds will top around 30 miles per hour. And good news is, Jose is getting weaker, but with that, the storm's impact is still strong. We also want to take you to Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, and we're taking you live there, 69 degrees.